feel so powerful in my natural hair. Can your hair give you power? I mean, it, it, I feel more power in my natural hair. I Welcome back, my wonderful lovelies that have been with me for a while. If you've been with me for a short time or if you're brand new, welcome, welcome. I hope you're subscribed, that you've uh, clicked the bell so you can get all my videos every week. I've begun to bring the Tuesdays back again with the dance fitness. And this time I'm trying to get up to like at least three songs, two to three songs every week on Tuesdays to uplift you and keep your blood pumping for your joy. And then on Thursdays, we talk about whatever we feel like it, including my uh, Good Enough the Web series. I'm planning on bringing that very soon, later on in the holidays, okay? Closer to like Christmas. So pray for me that that develops well. Um, I was doing them, but I'm going to revamp them and do them a little differently, the episodes. So stay tuned for that. You have to click the bell so you can get notified. Um, what else, what else, what else? Um, my dance class was online off of YouTube, but I decided to bring it on YouTube and make it free for everyone. I've had so many people asking about it. It makes it easier for me. It's become a ministry for me. So um, there is no charge. If you'd like to buy me coffee or <laughs> if you want to do anything, y'all have my email if you want to. That's fine. But I just want to love you and bless you with my uh, classes and I'm hoping that you guys get used to the dances and stuff and then I can come to a city near you and we can just do a big party and dance together you let me know if you're interested in that comment below if there's something you're interested in I already know my soccer superstars are interested uh, from the ones that took classes with me if you've taken a class with me and you know how amazing it is you've already spoken on Facebook to me about how much you love Sokka and you love me and my class, but why don't you let the lovelies know how much you love the class here. In the comments below, share what your experience has been with Sokka. It's something that's really hard to explain because body, mind, and spirit, you get, you really do get transformed. And so I've had not been able to be local. I have to do that in this way, but now I can bless people no matter where they live. I just want to be able to reach out to everybody who is interested in what I'm doing here. So welcome, welcome, welcome. If you are brand new, if you want to comment below and say hi to everybody, you, you, all you have to do is just put a wave. And anybody who has been a lovely for a while, if you could put a flower just to welcome them, that would be wonderful. Um, so let me see what else I want to say. Okay, so if you're new to my channel, what this channel is about is that we unlock the joy through our health, from the inside out, our hair and our beauty and lifestyle. Okay, we always keep Jesus at the center of all that we do. That's our goal. And we, if you like that and this is something that you would want for your life, then welcome, welcome, welcome. So I've given you all the updates. This video here is for my lovelies that have been with me from the beginning, but also if you're brand new, this is a good time to step in. I am going to attempt to share with you my hair journey as best as I can because it really is tricky, my hair journey. My <laughs> hair journey is a little unique and different because I've really, underneath my weave, I've always been natural. And then every so often I may try to texturize it and stuff like that. So it's a really interesting journey. So I'm gonna do my very best, similar to my testimony of my life, because <laughs> my hair journey is very connected to the, my life. And that's it's really connected to it in a very, interesting way and I think that you could probably relate to what I'm going to say. So if you're interested in that, please stay on and let's start to talk about that. I just want to say this real quickly. This is a long video, so you need to sit back, get some tea, relax, pause if you have to go to the bathroom, come back, and I'm finally giving you my hair journey. Enjoy. So when I was a little girl, I was about 14 years old. I discovered, now you know, this is like back in the 80s, okay? Early 80s, I think. I discovered extensions. Now, I can't take the credit because it was my mom and my sister who discovered 
Wait, did they discover weeds yet? No, it was extensions. I discovered it. I didn't know. It must have been the thing that started coming out. Now, I had an older sister, and I was the second oldest, and I always followed her lead. She was always trendy and always knew what was going on in the world and everything. So she and her best friend at the time, they both were in the music business, and they knew a lot, a lot of famous people, and they traveled to California and stuff like that. So they were like, um, California always was cutting edge. We were New York, and but we, I think California was ahead of us. So we learned about nails. I did my nails at 12 years old. I started putting fake nails on my nails at 12. Y'all know I'm over 40, right? So that's a lot of years of doing your nails. I did it myself. I was so into being feminine. And then I discovered fake hair at 14, I think. 14, 15. Um, I feel like I might have been even younger, but in my mind, I remember 14. Sometimes, you know, you mess that up, but I think it was about 14. I started putting it in my two braids. And I remember in school, people were like, how'd your hair grow so fast? I was obsessed with having long hair. I wanted long hair so badly. And my mom took care of my hair. We all know that when your mom takes care of your hair, your hair grows. But, or it retains because you did the little girl hairstyles, which now we realize are called protective styling. Anyway, um, I got sick of that. I wanted my hair to grow. I wanted nice skin. I wanted hair. I wanted nails. I wanted all that stuff, right? So I just started doing that kind of stuff really early. And actually, my mom knew how to do hair, remember? She did everybody's Jericho in the area. So even though I had the fake hair, I don't know if the Jericho came, no, Jericho came, there was a break where I wore Jericho for a while. My hair grew so long and it looked a lot like this and it just kept growing and growing and growing and I only combed it once a week. It was stretched out because it was already in the rod things. My mom loved my hair with it because it took it really well. I moisturized it. Think about this. And, my, and I got compliments like crazy from all kinds of people. I couldn't believe it. People would, they had pretty hair. It was just so beautiful. It looked like this, really, but not the kinks didn't show. And it just grew and grew. Now, a lot of us can say that. But what I learned from that was what it is a takeaway. And I have a cousin that was a hairdresser that said it years and years and years ago. He said, the problem with our hair is we need to moisturize it. Years ago. And I was like, tucked it in the back of my head. I'm like, why would he say that? We stay away from water. Water's not good for our hair, you know, because it makes it look bad or whatever. But I, he said that, and he's brilliant, my cousin. I think he's a preacher. And he took after my grandma, too, I think. But anyway, I got to reach out to him. But I learned a lot from that. And that's what made me want to go and get an escrow later because I said, that worked for my hair. So I had to find that whole concept, but with my natural hair. And I think I have, which is the stretching, moisturizing, and not combing it. You see? So sister, later on, when I got a little older, I think I was in high school at that point, she and my mom, the weave started coming out, and we were at the early on at that thing. Not a lot of African-American women were, take, were um, getting weaves. We were bold getting those weaves because in our area, New York City, a lot of us, I don't think you guys are going to want to hear this, but a lot of African-American women, especially ones that are dark, we didn't see ourselves as beautiful like we do now, as far as I remember. We were unusual, my family, my sisters and me, for wanting to be glamorous. It was almost looked down upon. We were like the pr pretty girls or whatever. And um, a lot of them were like tough and not happy with themselves. And I can see that. And I was always feeling happy. And I was like, I don't know why they're so angry all the time, you know. But my sister brought information from... California, I think. Then she did something interesting. She went with my mom. They had a plan. They went with my mom. She went with my mom to get her hair, get a weave in her hair. My sister was known in the area for doing great hair. She knew how to do braids. She knew how to do anything with hair. My mother too. They both were very good with hair. I'm really good too, but being in a family where people are really good, I don't always see myself as that good because they were so good. But anyway, um, but I am really good with fake hair. But anyway, <laughs> I love hair. I'm really good with hair. So she was good with styling and braiding and stuff. So what they did was they went to get their, she went to get her hair weaved. My mom and her had a plan. My sister was going to watch how they weaved her hair, learn how to do it, and then she was going to, from that point on, weave, get her, our hair weaves for free. So, because it was really expensive in the beginning, the hair was, getting it done and everything. So they did exa exactly that. So my sister became the person to do weaves. And it was just, she, so we did the, spiral or the corn rolls back and literally I think I started in high school with weaves and I wore weaves I started wearing extensions that I did myself I got the synthetic hair and I braided it into my hair and it was like two braids really long I was so proud of having longer hair that was my segue my gateway 
<laughs> and then from there, because I do believe you could be addicted to weaves, because I think I was. I think a lot of people are. For for good reasons, but I still feel like it's not good to to wear it for the rest of your life. But anyway, I did that. Um, I grew up in a Hispanic neighborhood, so I always saw beautiful, curly, thick hair flying around all the time. <laughs> so, you know, I'm used to looking at that all the time. I'm always going to be cute and glamorous was the word, I think, for me, that I wanted it. So... Um, I don't have pictures from when I was a little that I can think of with my plaits, my braids, um, two braids. But um, I may be able to find some weaves. So the weaves from high school on were the uh, dark weave. I wore this curly brown weave all the time. All the time. Like literally, I went from weave to weave for most of my adult life. Didn't matter how much money I had because I will just let that weave stretch it as far as I can go until I have money. That was a staple in my life. It was just as important as anything else. In fact, it probably was the most stable thing I ever had, you know, I've had throughout all the different seasons in my life. When I say seasons, I talk, I'm thinking high school, college, marriage, children, everything. Okay. So I had a weave for most of my adult life. Underneath the weave, my hair was natural, but my natural hair, I knew when I was a little girl that it was very curly and uh, fine, delicate, and be pretty. Everybody thought, so of the family, everybody said, oh, Trice, my nickname, she has the, I may cut that out. I don't want y'all to know my nickname. <laughs> I don't really like it. That's why, because it brings back really bad memories. But Patrice, you know, they always knew me to have the curly hair and you know they would say Indian hair like you got to go way back when we didn't know about typing we didn't know anything about hair so there was terms that maybe today would seem ancient and uncomfortable to hear but I'm just telling the story the real story and for any new person I'm over 40 so we're talking way back okay so if I was a teenager that's back 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 in the day and that explains a lot of reasons for why the mentality for having thick hair was so such a desperate thing because we were struggling with our image of beauty as uh, African-American people in America. We're still kind of struggling, but it was a whole nother thing. Think about it. If we have a star like Michael Jackson wanting to be a white man and having his hair straight, he must have felt some kind of pain, right? Well, there was pain going on, you know, in our culture in general. And then there was this general, if you want to make it, you need to kind of, the word we use, intellectuals would use in the past was assimilate. Assimilate. So you will look down upon if you were assimilating. And I guess I was considered someone who was assimilating because I was doing something that was mainstream. You know, I mean, it was very mainstream to have straighter hair. And I'm also a performer, I'm, you know, I'm cutesy. I like to be pretty and that was important to me. And I just found something that really looked good on me. I was like, this, I found what worked for me. And I was convinced that why wouldn't you if you could? Why wouldn't you just slap a weave on your head if you could? That's what we used to joke and say. We used to think that solved every problem, you know, just put a weave on your head, you know, just cook your hair up, you'll be good. And so we were like way before everybody in the Instagram doing it, we were doing it before any black girls were doing it. We were doing it way, way back in the day. But anyway, because if they're in the music business, they were kind of like ahead of the game. They were the ones leading while others were watching and following. And there was this time when that kind of look was only stars did it. Only famous people did the hair weaves. Only famous people did fake hair. You know, you got to think of like Janet Jackson, um, Control, around that time. We were looking, remember, I, I don't know if y'all remember, looking at that weave she had that was flat. We were trying to figure out how is she doing that, you know? So now we probably know that it was lines, but that was the beginning of understanding weaving and how to do weaves and how to get invisible weaves and all that kind of stuff. So this is like a new wave recently in the past like 10 years since the natural hair movement, there's been a new wave of wigs, how to make it so you can't see the front, but I was okay with the braids. Even with Beyonce, if you remember, she had the braids in the front and, um, and still in the curly hair. That's kind of how I wore my hair. It was invisible braids in the front. Eventually, um, so so I actually um, have a, I think I have a picture that represents the darker hair with me in a Pepsi uh, color outfit. It's a whole story in itself. If you're interested in that story, comment below. So I have that. That was when I was doing my modeling days and I was just, you know, graduating from, I think I was graduating from high school, in between high school and college was probably that year. Then I went to college, wore weave the entire time, 
tried to take it out and had some negative responses. I just felt so unattractive. And I felt like my shoulders showed more like with short hair, you know. Something didn't seem right. And I couldn't figure out why isn't it working for me? You know, and uh, I try, and I remember, you know, meeting a white girl that um, had really hair, looks like me, maybe even curlier. And she, I remember her saying she blows, blows her hair out to stretch it. And I was like, that seems like a lot of work. But I just, you know, those were things that ended up later on, ended up being what we do. We didn't know how to take care of our hair. I didn't know how to take care of my hair. And people were always saying, your hair's so pretty. I would just wear it if I was you. They didn't understand that my hair shrunk up so much. And now we know that's shrinkage, we know what to do with shrinkage, that I couldn't really see the pattern. And when it dried, there was no more curl pattern. Like I couldn't see the curls. So I loved gel, I loved grease and gel and things that would help me see the pattern and do something with it. I just didn't know how to stretch it. What we know now is stretching. So now I band my hair now. So I just never knew what to do with this pretty hair. Uh, so I just said, well, let me just put it back in a weave. So every time I would take my weave out, there'd be like a month where I would try it again. And I would try to take care, do my hair. And I just, it just never looked, I looked like a little girl. And I was trying to be a woman, like a glamorous woman. And um, I just didn't know what to do with it. So it would only, the most I could go is two months. And then I'd just be like, I'd give up and just go back into the, the weave. And I would be so much happier. And I would feel so much more confident. And I had, had so much go on in my life that now I realize that my hair was my little like rest, like one area where I could just like not worry. And it just made, brought me what I thought was joy because I felt happy. I felt like it was like my place to just kind of escape almost and feel pretty and just feel like, well, in this area, I'm okay. And I felt like, you know, I was known for having a really nice body and uh, it's almost like the hair just finished it up made it complete and it just turned me into this big superstar and um in my mind and if i seem conceited i don't mean that i'm just being really honest with you that's my hair journey so this is my hair journey maybe somebody else's hair journey something else but mine was more on the stardom level like being a star being a performer and i walked around like a star people treated me like that and they were intimidated or it was just like it just kind of pulled me together in a way where you know People just saw me that way. And so, and then men were coming, wanting me, and you know, girls were jealous and all that kind of stuff. So I always uh, attributed all of that to the hair for so many years. And then, um, so those were these years. So let me just see if I can get a picture that pictures that focuses on that. That was when I had my long blonde hair from college. I got lighter and lighter with the color because I noticed the color started looking nice on me, the lighter hair. And maybe that was a style too, I'm not sure. This is way before Beyonce, and I ended up being compared to Beyonce with that color hair. And I remember somebody saying, you're finer than her, it was really cute. And I just never received it 100%, uh, always saying, oh, it's probably the hair. You know, I don't know why. I mean, I knew I had beauty, but I think I put so much in the hair, and the hair took up so much of the attention that I just thought that was it. But I knew in my head that it was, finishing a nice picture like I had such a stand stunning figure for so many years now I'm getting older and you can probably see some things going on but for so many years it was like like chiseled and so like perfect muscular and uh, no body fat and everything and it was almost like the hair was what I thought was missing I'm like oh god you almost got it right let me let me help you out like I had to help God out or something he had it right from the beginning I just had to see that and realize that. But at the time, this is a story, so I gotta tell you the truth, I thought I was doing that. And that's what my sisters and I believed that people could do. And it worked for that time. It did give me a break. It did give me a break from having to deal with that level of racism, maybe, I don't even know. Who knows, you know, racism is something you can't really put your finger on. But maybe I was um, included in many things. And I don't know, all I know is it made me feel good about myself, it made me feel beautiful, it made me feel complete. It, made, it felt like that's what I should have been looking like in my mind, right? Like I, um, and, and then growing up in a Hispanic neighborhood, I feel like I identified with that curly hair. I never did straight, straight bone straight hair because I never liked bone straight hair. And I liked that natural curl. I just wanted to loosen my curl, I wanted it to fall. And I liked it mid back. 
So, and I grew up with like best friends with hair like that. And I was like, oh, I wish I could have my hair like that. You know, like wanting that hair. So I was like, wait, I'm just gonna buy it. So I just got it, you know? So instead of suffering, which I felt like I was doing, wishing that I had something that I was not born with, I was like, oh, well, I'll just get it. So I did. And, so it's, and it's not like it's hurting my body. I get to take it off and put it back on. It's not like it's surgery. That's how I, you know, saw it. And um, I just felt like it accented. It was like the framing of all the other things that I have beautiful. Well, that was what I used to justify, but what was going on inside, I think I was really relying on it. Because then when I got into, you know, I was into acting my whole life. But when I got more, when I graduated from college, let me see, was I in college then? Yeah. Graduated from college, then I started going to my acting classes in New York and I started getting into the world more seriously because I now I could and I went to California and all that kind of stuff. So the college years I did the fake hair. I tried to stop as much as I could, but I got bad. This guy said something really rude to me. He said that I look like a man or something like that. I look like my father to me when I took my hair out at that time. I didn't know what to do. I didn't have enough. I tried so hard and you know, like I said, I gave it two months. Now, the only people that liked it were white people. They were the ones that said, oh, it looks cute. I think it's so cute. My best friend did. And they just loved the natural hair. It was just really interesting. And I was seem to always be around white people, Caucasian. Like I went to a school that was all predominantly white. I went to an acting class that was. So I was always around them. And um, for some reason, now I went from Hispanic neighborhood to that. They never had a problem with my natural hair. Every time I, every time I was with them, I took my hair out and it was kinky and they loved me and everything was fine. But when I went back into like my world, I felt like I had to wear it. It was just really weird. So um, acceptance, I'm sure, has been an overarching theme. So and just feeling good about myself. So there's a lot of reasons. So then after that, when I was out of graduate from college, I went to California. And, you know, looking all stunning and beautiful. I got a job easily. And it was just, like, really nice. That's a whole story. I'll tell you about my California story one day. But I may have a picture. I'm not sure if I have a picture for that. But it's the same look that I've had for many years. And it is the look that I had for acting. So what I ended up doing is I got a headshot that I had to stick with. And that was my excuse for keeping my weave for many years is that I was taught from my workshops and all my classes that if you have a look you got to lock into that look you got to wear that look so i always kept my look no matter what was going on in my life and as you know from my te testimony video is that i had a lot of heavy stuff going on in my life so for you know honestly now that i'm telling the story i actually give myself a break with that because if i could have a break there was no way i could have had this journey during all that i went through in my life there is no way that I could have done this journey with all that I went through in my life. I couldn't even take care of me. So that was like a way to kind of still look great, still look stunning and great and amazing and all this stuff while all this stuff was going on in my life. And that's probably why a lot of people couldn't even tell because I had this great, good look on the outside, you know? And I loved my weave, don't get me wrong. I loved it and I enjoyed it. And so I've always had long hair my whole life since 14 because I've always dealt with long hair. So I'm loving it, but deep inside, I'm still trying to figure out how can I go natural? I would see girls with hair that look like this and say, God, if you ever let my hair be at least that long, because I decided that after looking at myself, you know how you know if you could wear polka dots or, or what you could wear, what works with you? I realized that I think for myself that I need some length. I need at least three inches of hair for it to look right on me. That's how I felt for, about myself. I didn't feel like I liked my hair in the in-between stage of the TWA. I didn't like that. And so I said, Lord, if you could just give me some length and just let me be able to show my curls a little bit, that would be, I would just be so grateful. I would never wear the wig. So for many years, deep in my heart, I really wanted my hair. I just didn't know how to do it. And every time I tried, I did. So I would have times in between where I would do a texturizer. I would put... The, I have, I don't think, I don't know if I can find it, but one day I will show you this picture because it's a picture when I had my daughter who is 21, so you can tell how many years ago that was. I took it out when I had the children. I didn't have money then, so I was like, forget it, I can't do the weave. But because of the prenatal pills and all that, my hair grew so nice that I was like, oh my gosh, it's so nice and thick right now. So then I just put a texturizer to soften it because it was all about the stretching that I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to keep make it look like a, a woman and not a little girl that was my biggest thing how do i keep it from shrinking all the time 
because I wanted to hang and look like a hairstyle. So I did uh, I, I did uh, something that I call texturizer, which is I kept the perm in for I could never perm my hair it would fall out. So I knew that already. So I kept the perm in for like two minutes and it softened my curls and that's what I would do. And I did that for a little while, but for me, after the third redo, it, it falls out. So that's what ended up happening. Yeah. I had the same hairstylist in New York for years. Then when I moved to North Carolina, I had the same hairstylist and I still have her today. I love her. And if you are in Charlotte, North Carolina, you need to go to Bext Hair Salon because she is amazing. She's my sister, I love her. So anyway, she, I moved to Georgia and still drove all the way because I went to Georgia and tried somebody there. They were awful. I'm sorry. I was in Columbus, Georgia. So I was like, that's it. I'm driving all the way to Charlotte for my girl every time I get my hair done. And I've been doing that for many, 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 many years. The only reason I haven't gone to her is because I went natural. So uh, she is my girl. Anyway, y'all need to go to her if you want to know about a good place in Charlotte. Um, so she, what happened was in acting, what happened was I was, I had all these braids everywhere. And then one day I had uh, an audition where I got the audition, but they said, oh, um, can you take that out? And I was like, oh, sure. While inside going like, there's no way I could take all this stuff out. <laughs> there is no way. But you can't say that. You got to find a way to take it out. Can you take it out by tomorrow? He wanted me to take it out by tomorrow. So I did a commercial for something called Quick Weave years ago when it first came out. I think it's something now. I'm not sure. But I had to take my hair out and wear my natural hair and then put on this Quick Weave. And it was in New Jersey. So I took all those braids out and it was a nightmare. Had to go get it blown out because remember, I don't know how to do my hair. Back then, I had to get a Dominican blowout, I think, or something like that. And I don't usually do that because they blow my hair out too much and it, so it dries it out. My scalp gets dry. It's a long story. Anyway, even my mom noticed that back when I was younger. My hair just dries out so easily. So, I did it. But then I learned something because that was when Brandy was really famous. And she, I found out that all her braids were wigs. They weren't real. I was like, how'd she keep her braids fresh all the time? Because they were wigs. So I was like, mm, that's a good idea. Or she would just do this part and the rest of it was a weave. I was like, that's what I'm gonna do. So I started having my girl do invisible braids here and then I would do a wig, a weave from here on. And I did that for many years and that was my thing. Nobody knew until it started receding. And when I started receding, I had to get it done over or I'd figure out a way. I'd put a pin there. I don't know. But I had my little thing. And then um, I had a place in New York that I used to get my hair. Literally, I'm telling you guys, the entire time that I had my hair in a weave, I went to this one place. I don't even know if I want to give you their name because I'll, I'll think about it. Because I didn't really like how the service was at the end. But they literally grew up with me. I went to that same place for my entire adult life doing my hair that's over 20 years 30 maybe uh going there regularly regularly because they were the ones that had the hair i had to get the hair from there now then there was a time when weaves and wigs turned into another thing so remember famous people were the ones leading everything right so when their stuff started becoming more common for others then we had other places okay i'll just tell you lugo's hair in new york if you know lugo's they were in charge of weaves for many years, one family. And I really love them. But at the end, I started feeling like my hair shedded a lot. So I'm not gonna encourage you to go unless you know new information and they're better. But I really love them. I just started to feel frustrated with the same complaints at the end. And that was part of why I was like, oh, it just pushed me even more to get rid of my hair. But I'm gonna get the picture. The picture that I have there, I'm gonna start showing you is with the blonde weave and that was for most of my life you so you can even look at videos here and see all kinds of pictures so i'm just going to give you lots of pictures of those um and then and it led up to my main picture of my headshot that was really the look that captured encapsulated that time for me and that look that i loved and i hit the pinnacle of that i got a lot of auditions i was doing really well feeling good about my career and then um 
And then let me just go back to the logo. So I was doing that with that uh, hair place and for many, many, many years. Then the hair uh, wig and hair world started to expand for, and it was more available to us. African-American women started to notice how beautiful they are. Instagram starts to grow up. YouTube starts to teach us some stuff. We start realizing, wait a minute, this melanin ain't so bad. Oh, wait a minute. Other people want to be, have this. Um, we're beautiful. Well, now that I know I'm beautiful, well, let me make my hair beautiful. Either it's natural or wigs or weaves or whatever, eyelashes, makeup. And now there's this big explosion of all these beautiful black women knowing they're beautiful and showing it off all over Instagram, YouTube, and this whole new world. As that's happening, I'm going the other direction. <laughs> I get so sick. I have a bad marriage and I get so sick of the hair and how that person was attracted to me because of my hair and my beauty and all that stuff that I started growing and even though I look younger, I'm in my 40s, so I'm starting to go through a different stage in life inside, even though the outside looks different. I'm like getting sick to my stomach with it. And he said a comment one day that really made me upset. And he says, I wish I could take that hair off. As though the reason why so many women loved me and so many wonderful things in my life were coming my way was because of the hair. And that made me so furious and frustrated. And I said, I love a challenge, you know? Once you start putting that on me, I'm going to challenge uh, myself because I've been wanting to do that anyway and I'm kind of concerned about that myself. So let me take my hair out. So I had this agent that loved me, took the hair out, and you know, okay, I'm gonna lighten it because I know it's such a big change to just go short. I don't wanna go short and dark. And I know I'm, I'm an actress, I gotta stick to my picture. So, and things are going good. I got all these auditions and she was just a very good agent and worked really hard for me. Um, so it's nothing against her as an agent in general. I just think this was, the, this, was a, this was a time when things were switching up and for us as, as a community, and I don't think everybody was ready for it. They're still not ready. I'm still kind of frustrated with how people are responding to my natural hair, but it was, I had to be ready. You know, I hadn't been ready, but you know, my life was starting to get a little bit more more do understandable for me because I was getting older. I was like, you know what? I'm doing this. I had so many attempts to doing it that I finally said, I'm doing it. I took it out, put some light hair on my head. I don't know if I have pictures. I think I might have some pictures of that. If I do, I will post them. That was a sore spot already for me, switching from that glamorous hair to the straight hair, to short hair, and trying to find my way. I understood where she was coming from, but I was in a place where I was ready to be accepted with for who I am. And I said to myself, okay, this is what it's going to be like. Get ready for it. Um, I'm ready for it. Bring it. Whoever's really with me because they like me will be with me. And those who are with me because I had that look that was more, I guess, Caucasian and more easy to consume or have then I guess I'll lose them. Those are the shallow people. And I feel bad because I did a great job branding myself and getting everybody used to it, so I can't get mad at them because I branded myself. I'm very good with branding because I stick with whatever. I'm, I stick with things, you know? And I branded that. That was my brand. And I'll show you that picture. Keep that picture up. That's my brand. I did very well. I wanted people to see me that way. I wanted that for many years. So to flip on people after having a dance fitness program, and having my acting and having people know me for that, I did very well with putting that out. I would go out in Winston and people would stop me like I was a star. People just recognized me and really, literally treated me like I was a famous person. And my classes, they loved the hair flying when I danced. It was just, it really did take a life of its own. And I knew that the hair had a lot to do with that success. And then with Zumba going on, the hair having a lot to do with Zumba and that being a thing that was going on at the time. And then I had my, my own dance fitness program. It was like part of that whole thing. And I enjoyed, you know, my hair, I enjoyed it. So I'm not going to sit here and pick at people because they respond to things. Cause I know there is racism, but then there's also a variation of just this underlying subconscious, um, prejudice that we don't really even all of us may have in different ways that don't we don't even realize we have and it's because of what we're used to seeing it's used to it's what we're used to and it's something that takes a lot longer to get used to so i'm not blatantly racist against you 
as a person right now in my conscious world mind, but I didn't realize that I liked you because you had the blonde long hair. I didn't even know that about myself. So that's the part that I pardoned her with and I pardoned other people. I don't know, I don't know at all. I don't know, only God knows all the answers. All I know is I decided I'm going in a direction where this is how it's gonna be and I'm staying in this until I get it right and since the agents can only support you if they really are, got your back and they really believe in you. I feel and like that hair allowed for people to have my back, come to my classes, wanna be with me, white, black, Spanish, it didn't matter who they were. And I had, uh, I had, I was so, always so proud that my dance fitness classes were always full of everybody. I took pride in that because I believe in that. I took my hair out and I started to notice my class was getting a little different. Really not when I was in Winston. In Winston, I got my girls. They loved me no matter what. But even in that class, there were a few people that I noticed that just disappeared afterwards. And I never really understood why. They actually treated me better and liked me better. And then they just kind of disappeared. There's my diehards, for the most part, all of them. And then there was a few people that were like a group, group of family members, group of people that I just noticed. They just kind of like left. I've noticed some people didn't want to talk to me as much on Facebook. They just didn't want to connect with me anymore. I was ready for it. So I don't know if I have that hair, that picture, but I was ready for it. I was ready to deal with that. I wanted to get rid of the guy, the man, if that's why he came to my life. He actually made me feel like if this is what I attract looking like this, then I don't want it. And the natural hair movement had been a, on underway for a while. So this is like 2014. And I was so wanting it so badly. My, my daughter had already done her journey. She had been encouraging me. She's like, it's because you don't give your hair a chance. And I knew giving my hair a chance meant I have to go outside in my real life like this and really face what people think of me with my natural hair. And I gotta be ready for this. I stopped the acting, got, I left my agent, and I said, I'm doing this. And I went through it, it wasn't easy. Um, I can point, put some pictures up here. I just had this, like, you know how you get this spiritual awakening? I just, I just felt, I had this thing happen. Now, some people cut their hair when the guy is a, does things or whatever, or they're a hot mess. But I felt like I, I needed to wash him out of my life and everything he represents and whatever in me that attracted that. I did, hated it. I hated whatever in me that attracted that. Anything that may brought that or would bring that in my life again. He was so superficial and just so dim, dark and, and unkind that I thought, that's it. I don't want anything like that in my life. I mean, he helped me, I guess, in some ways, because I don't want anything that attracts the wrong people. I was ready to be loved for who I was, naturally. Everything that I am, I was ready if people just couldn't stand my kinky hair and whatever. And I'm going to be honest, and now I'm going to start showing you some pictures of how I looked with that. And then I met this wonderful man that loved me for me and was treating me exactly the way everyone else treated me when I had that long hair. Like I was this amazing, beautiful superstar. And I'm gonna be honest, I had a very hard time receiving it for like the first year or two years. I'm probably being modest about that. And I just couldn't receive it. And I was like, he just doesn't know any better. He was like, you're just so beautiful. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe he's saying this, you know? So that's the first two years before I came on here. Those were when you might see me dancing uh, maybe I'll get a clip of those. Those were the, I'm going to show you those photos of me dancing because that's all I had on here. I was going through my journey. So my journey started with longer hair. So it, started, it was shorter. It started longer because I had it in the weave so long. It was long. It was just like thinner, I guess, but longer. And it might've been like this a little bit, but then it started falling because I was dying it and I was trying to figure out a way to make it stay longer. And I have to, I'm going to confess, there was this time when I went to a hairdresser I had such a serious, sad withdrawal or whatever I was going on inside that they had to convince me that I was beautiful. They were like, you, you know you're beautiful. And I was like, I literally had a very, very hard time hearing them. I was like, you guys are crazy. What do you mean? It was almost, it was like body morphology. It's so in that level. I really, not horribly, but I mean, think about it. My whole life, since I was 14, I'm in my 40s. That's a lot of years. So they, they were looking at me and I was thinking, I was at the hairdresser and I said, but I wanted to move and I wanted to, and they said, that's not how your hair is. And I, 
I was so upset. <laughs> this is a real serious, honest truth. And I was so upset. And she had to cut the dot dead hair and it made it shorter. And I was just like, oh my goodness. And then I used some stuff that she tried to start with some product. Then I started, I said, let me go get the S curl. Cause that, and this girl stopped me in Target. She took it. She was so sweet. She's from New York too. She's like, girl, I'm not even gonna let you buy this S curl. You're not buying it. I was just like, so I went, <laughs> I didn't know what to do with my hair. I had no idea what to do with my hair. So I knew I was not putting a weave in. I was so proud of myself, not putting a weave. Then I got married. My daughter was helping me. She was encouraging me. She kind of said, you just don't give yourself a chance. You gotta, you gotta take care of it. You gotta love it and give it a chance. even though she was giving me advice, it's not easy actually living in my body and doing it. It's one thing to say it, everybody can say it all they want to, but your whole world is gonna change their reaction to you based on what you look like. So I can show you pictures of that. We both cut our hair at the same time. If I can find a picture, I'm gonna show you. You'll see her hair is past her butt right now and mine is here. And we, we both started at the same time. So obviously it's really hard for me to grow my hair, retain my hair. So anyway, she um, she and I was doing that at my wedding. I ended up wearing my natural hair. I'm gonna show you that picture. I was so proud of myself because deep in my heart, I wanted to wear my natural hair. So I still had the blonde at the tips for my block, for my wedding, but that was the last day I forced her to straighten it for my wedding. And she was like feeling so bad. She was like, no, I don't wanna do it. She heard it. She knew about natural hair before I did. She was on YouTube. She knew everything about natural hair, but her hair wasn't like mine, but she knew about it. And so she was the one encouraging me and telling me that I need to go, you know, learn about it and get the right product for it and all that stuff. And so after she did that, it clicked again. I was like, that's it. I'm never gonna put hot, hot any heat on my hair and I'm gonna do anything to it. So I say all that to say that my true journey started the day of my wedding. Cause the day before my wedding, she did the hot stuff. I was growing out the dye in my hair and all the mess I was doing to my hair, it was growing out and falling after the wedding. So I had to get rid of that blonde hair at the end and let it fall. That's when my, wedding, my, my natural hair journey really started. And after that, I was taking care of this child. I'll show you some pictures of that. I was doing, I had a TW, uh, TWA and I was doing twist outs of flat twists and think I did flat twists and I was learning how to do it looking on YouTube looking at you I was so proud like never a weave again then I go on a YouTube channel and says you got to protect your hair for the winter you got to get a weave I was like what so then I was like part of me was like you know what? it would be nice to take a little break I'll just make sure it's kinky so I went to Onyx and I got fake hair and you'll see that in some of my headshots I can show you some of those and first I got a kinky, as kinky as I could get, because I was on this psychological journey also of making sure that I never get in that place again where I'm relying on something that's not me and so that the flip won't be that hard for me or for others in my life, right? So here I, I stopped acting, remember? And so I go back to that. Then I start back on my acting again. My life did change. I didn't get the same opportunities anymore. And I know I got a little older, but you know, I mean, I used to get really good responses from, especially white men. They love black women. <laughs> and I, you know, they like me. They haven't, I've had some negative responses, especially in North Carolina and the South. A lot of my dark, my bad stuff from treating bad to me will have been like in North Carolina. But men and just me, rude to me. And I never had that before. They always like were flirting with me. And I'm thinking, is this like intimidating to them? Because I had the shorter hair and it was kinkier. I was like, am I in at my wedding? One of the guys was so mean to me. They're just mean, like white men from the South. And I'm just like, why are they so mean to me? And I'm like, you know, like just not nice. And I thought, okay, this is part of it. Let me deal with it. Maybe this was something that would have happened to me, but I've reneged on it with fake hair. I'll deal with this too. All it did was bring out more strength than me. And maybe this is what they assumed I would have been anyway. I don't know. But anyway, uh, my classes were wonderful. I started to bring in all kinds of people again in my class. I got used to it because they saw it was still me. <laughs> and then they loved me and they loved me anyway. Some people, they're just so wonderful and stuck with me no matter what. Um, when I went to Greensboro, though, that class was predominantly African-American because Greensboro had more African-American people in general. But I think I attracted more black women with my natural hair. Like, like I was saying, it's a black class. And not that I'm against any of that, but I always took pride in showing that I'm open to everybody. But, you, you know, people are shallow. It's all about what you look like. It end up, ended up being a beautiful class where we were able to bond and grow together. It was wonderful. So I am so glad that that happened. 
But I have to be honest, I saw some changes. Um, my husband, though, has never stopped encouraging me. And he's yeah. like, when I did that video of which I'll find and in, in link here about how what has grown my hair, one of the main things was my husband uh, helped me retain my length because he has been such the support with my hair from the beginning. He's what I attracted with my natural hair. I honestly feel like if I didn't have my natural hair, I may not have attracted him to me. And I feel like I'm more real and more me and more grounded. And I just love being natural. I just love everything about my natural hair. I just felt like I struggled with a TWA and I'm just going to be honest because I didn't feel glamorous and beautiful like I want to be with short hair. There was a time also way back in the day when I my hair fell out from a perm uh, talking on the phone and I went away to Spain and I wore it short the entire time and they loved me. I, was, I stood out. It, I was away from America and I was able to wear my natural hair and it was this short and I felt beautiful. I loved it. I was like, oh, I, the stress of America is off. I can just wear my natural hair. And so it's something about America and this whole racism and an image and all that that is so, so prevalent here that I think that's what brought out me wearing fake hair. And I decided to just face it finally now that I'm old enough and my life is in a place where I can actually take the time and get to know my hair. So I went with a husband that gave me and offered, afforded me the ability to have self-care, spend time with myself. You all watch my journey. And I started to get this journey. Once, once that blonde hair grew out and I, I came out of that winter with longer hair, I'll show you some pictures of that. I started a deliberate journey with you. That's why you came on board. But what happened was it was longer, it fell out, all that hair fell out. I went through the winter and it gave me a little boost that winter. So if you have a TWA and you wanna go through the winter with some fake hair just to give you get, get you through those six months, I went through that. Then I had this natural uh, life-changing time where I wanted to be very natural inside, start getting deliberate with my health inside. When my aunt got sick and my mom, I found out because they don't tell me everything and with my hair and I just started over I prayed to the Lord and asked him to help me grow my hair he told me about honey told me about honey and then I learned from curly proverbs about the henna and I and I've been doing that ever since I've been inspired by her to use henna and created my own concoction now I sell that and I'm still doing that diligently then I had a rice water damage incident where I had just my hair started to fall out again not fully but kind of you know how that happens. It eats away at the ends. And now I'm back from that since not this last June, not this June, but the June before, I believe my hair came back. Uh, it started growing again. And now that's where I am today. So I'm going to try to keep these pictures going all throughout this. This has been a really long video, so I don't want to go any longer. I'm going to edit this as best as I can because there's some really touchy things in here. So I don't want anyone to get upset, but you know, when somebody's telling their story and we're talking about America and the truth, it's nothing personal, it's just the truth. If it wasn't true, then I wouldn't have this experience. I mean, it's really embarrassing, this part of America. I'm gonna be honest, it is a very embarrassing thing that we have racism and we have all these things still going on. And even in my last video, I'm auditioning, now I'm back auditioning and I'm still getting problems with my hair. You know, I had a new agent and now I got the age and hair because I look young for my age. And so while this is going on, I'm getting older, but not looking my age, but I'm still getting a little older. So I'm having to adjust in that as an actress. And then I took my hair out and I have this new look. So those two things changed me so much in terms of a look that I feel like, you know, I just want to break through. And, you know, the cop out would be, let me go back and get that weave again, because it seems like everybody loves that. So instead, I got the wig just in case, but it's just frustrating that we're growing this community so much and we're we're rocking it. I mean, really? Our eyes have not been adjusted to the beauty of this? For real? I mean, what? I'm really, real. I mean, y'all got a comment below, isn't it? Is it just me? But this is gorgeous. And, and so many, I mean, we have arrived, our hair, 4C, 3B, I don't care, that natural, full, healthy hair. I don't even care if you have straight hair. Natural hair is just gorgeous. And it's just, I've always loved it my entire life. I've always been drawn to it. That's why my weave has always had texture. And now I'm finally doing it, and I'm excited about it, and I made it pretty, and it's like, even black shows, I'm like, 
my acting is good, guys. I promise you. I promise you I'm, I'm a good actress. <laughs> and, you know, I get all these compliments and everything. And I'm just like, okay. So I just got to do my own thing. How about that? I'll, I will cast myself in my own web series. What do y'all think about that? Mm -hmm. I feel so powerful in my natural hair. Can your hair give you power? I mean, it, it, I feel more power in my natural hair. I feel like the Polynesians do that. And, the, and the, uh, there's something about it. It makes me feel strong and, and confident. And I just love it. And it feels so good. I don't feel as good now with fake hair. I feel wonderful with my natural hair. And I hope you get there too. This has been an amazing journey. My latest is that, um, that, that I can give you a tip to get to this link is I've been taking the Mineral Rich and I think it really has been growing my hair. And I think it's gonna, it's, look at that. I think I'll be armpit lit very soon. Uh, the Dionysius Earth, um, I've been taking that. The Biotin, these, yeah, these things are delicious. I've been taking that and I think it's been making my hair full. I always take my, my multivitamins, you should take that with any kind of Biotin. So I've been taking that. I take black seed and I take uh, flaxseed oils and omega oils. So these are some things that I take that I think is helping with the health of my hair. I'm always trying to keep myself hydrated. I'm exercising and um, massaging my scalp and I stick to the same regimen and I do something called training my hair. I keep it the same all the time. And it's good for your hair to do that. You don't wanna be messing with it too much. And you don't wanna keep wigs in for long terms. So this is a very, 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 very long video, but I wanted to leave you with that tip at the end to help you if you're on your journey. I love you very, very, very much. And my main thing, aside from my wonderful husband, now I finally see what he's been talking about. I really am beautiful. And I always knew I was beautiful. My parents always told me, but I never honestly believed that the hair was beautiful um, in the way that I wanted it to be beautiful. Everybody has their level of what beauty is. And there's this glamorous level where I've always wanted to feel glamorous. I don't feel bad about saying that at all because that's me. I'm like that, right? So now I have my natural nails. I have SNS on top of my natural nails. I have my natural hair. Everything's natural and real, and I'm, I'm really excited. My birthday's this month, and I'm getting older and older, and God is good. And, and I have my natural hair product line with my growth oil, my, my clay to go with it, the honey, like the Lord told me, and my styling jam. And it's what I use all the time, and I'm really excited about it. Um, I use Giovanni conditioner and shampoo, and I use Russell clay for after I wash it. Um, the conditioner I do as a deep conditioner with mine. I blend it sometimes. I don't always use it, but I can use it mixed in with my mask. And um, I think that's everything that I use. So I, this is one of them really long ones. I love you guys. I will see you in the next video. And uh, comment below. Let me know how your hair journey is doing. Let me know if this is good. I'm finally giving you the hair journey video. All right. Stay tuned for Good Enough, the web series. Keep Jesus a part of your journey. Keep him in the center of all that you do. He can do it. And he loves you. There's a reason for why you have to go through each stage to be where you are. He's using you. Since this is so long I already, I might as well share the gospel. If you've been wanting to be a part of the family of Christ, but you just don't know because it's so confusing, how do I do it? Am I a Christian? If you're not 100% sure you're going to heaven, this is how you go. It's free. It's simple. This is all you have to do is just say this prayer, um, dedicating yourself to the Lord. Okay, so repeat after me. If you've already said the prayer, I'll see you in the next video. Love you. But if you haven't and you want to stay on, Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I turn from my ways. I'm ready to live for you and go your way. I believe you died on the cross just for me. I believe you walked this earth beforehand. And then I believe you died for me and you unlock the keys to hell and you rose again the third day. I believe that you're alive today in heaven at the right side of God the Father. Please come in my heart and be my Lord and Savior so I can live forever with you in heaven. And you can give me a joy in my heart until then. Amen. If you really, 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 really said that prayer from the bottom of your heart, honestly, today's your birthday. You are what they call born again of the spirit. It's the most important thing you could have done in your entire life. It's the only thing that matters on this earth is to do that. And now the next thing is to drink milk and to read the Bible and grow and grow every 
day and be with people that are eating meat who have been seasoned and growing in the Lord for a long time. You want to be connected to those people to help you grow. Find a Bible-based church and you can look that up and ask people what that means. Find a holy Bible that you can understand. The NIV is wonderful. I like the King James, but it's not as easy to read. So the NIV is wonderful. And just keep growing in the Lord. When you when you have received the Holy Spirit, Receive Jesus as your Savior, you received the Holy Spirit in you, which is the, th the um, third head of the God, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in you, and it will give you the ability to overcome anything you're going through. You can't do it on yourself, on your own, but now you've done the thing you need to do for, for God to do it for you. All you have to do is surrender to that Holy Spirit every day and let it grow and talk to you every day. Walk in the Spirit. There'll be a day, if today wasn't that day, that you're going to fully surrender your life to God. And if today's that day, you've already been saved and you're still watching, you want that to be today, you can actually say this prayer, okay? Lord, I'm ready to surrender my entire life to you. I, I don't want to walk another step doing things the way I understand. I, from now on, want to do what the Holy Spirit in me tells me to do. Help me to surrender to you talking through me in the Holy Spirit's form. Please help me, Lord, to have the courage to do things that are embarrassing, but yet in the end there will be a blessing so I can be transformed to be more and more like you every day. That is a long prayer, but go ahead and pause it, rewind it, and you can listen to it again. All right, I love you guys so much. See you in the next video. Bye.